And in Hastings, on the south coast of England, Robin Johnson works wonders with wood. He loves a restoration challenge, and today he's expecting a visit from London-based dealer Shere Khan Yumoji. He says he's got something pretty special, and that's going to be quite exciting because he's a man with eclectic taste. He's like a magpie, I think. Sometimes he just sees things he likes and buys them. All right, Robin. Shere Khan, how you doing? Yeah, not bad, man. Has it arrived? Something big's in there. All right, let's have a look. look. I absolutely fell in love with it when I saw it. It's just something that just had to be restored. Have a look. No, yeah, I'll wait for you. It's nice. Yeah? Oh, wow. What do you think of that? Oh, man, I like that. I really like that. What I've got here is a set of industrial drawers straight out of, like, a proper workshop. This is, like, real-life workshop. It is what it is. I reckon it was probably kind of, like, made by the workmen themselves. Mm. Um, pine, I think. Late Victorian. What do you reckon? It's a bit of woodworm moved really? in. Yeah, it's a bit squishy along the top, so we've got to whip that bit out. OK. Every corner's got a bit of damage. That's, it's either had a bit of a hard life, been taken around a few places or fallen off a wall yeah. or something like that. And it's going to take a long... from details on it. I've just noticed the little inlays yeah. where the drawers are, that structure. Someone's gone to a lot of work to make this. The, the detail in it is incredible, but I noticed there's a couple of drawers missing. Yeah, it needs a few drawers. And I'm hoping that you can uh, replicate some of them. Yeah, definitely. They're really nice, these drawers. They've definitely been made by hand. Just some beautiful little dovetails. It did have a, some sort of handle or knob on yeah. it at some point, but they're all come off. I'm sort of thinking it might look nice with little brass pulls on it or something. Well, Could... I mean, I mean, things like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave to your own kind of artistic talents. They've got to look right. If you can just make them look right, make them look part of, of it, I don't want them to look as if we've, we've replaced them. Um, I don't want to lose the old labels. So any labels that you do find on them, let's save. OK. Because um, th that just all adds to it. It's a beautiful piece. It is. It's really, really nice. How much did you pay for it? I paid a few hundred quid for it. Did you? Um, I might have paid a little bit too much. Do you know what? I'm going to do this one for the love. I appreciate the, the amount of work and the level of craftsmanship that's gone into this. When I get the invoice, I'll just pay it back with love. <laughs> Take care, man. <laughs> All right, I'll leave it to you. It's such a beautiful piece, and it sort of takes me back to, you know, when I first started out having to really hone my skills on, on that kind of craft. Wasting no time, Robin cleans down the unit with methylated spirits. If you go with the grain, it's a lot, lot nicer. There's a lot less resistance. Before carefully removing the old labels that Shere Khan wants to keep. Ivory. Oh, that's pretty old if they got ivory in the drawers. With the years of grime now gone, Robin can focus on the large number of missing drawers. He's making them from pine, a durable wood that he can match to the existing frame. So, that is my two sides, my front, my back, and my base. Next thing is to actually start marking out the dovetails. Now, you can see there's two dovetails there. It looks really simple, but it's quite a tricky little bit of marking out to do. To mark the depth of the joints, he uses a marking gauge. It's one of my favourite tools, actually. It's such a simple tool, but it's so good. It's a bit of wood with a pin through it and a sliding block that locks off on a thread. They do two things. They give you a mark to go off and you actually score the surface. Now, when you start cutting or chiselling, because you've scored the surface, you're less likely to get what's called breakout, where a few splinters might come out of this edge. Because you've scored it, the cut's more likely to be a lot cleaner. A dovetail marker is a useful tool for getting angles correct. The usual angle for softwoods like pine is one in six. With that done, he breaks out the chisels. How I normally start this is by just marking my kind of outside edges. Be quite careful here because it's just... 
very thin softwood. So if I go in a bit too much, it's likely to crack the wood. There you go. Next, he marks corresponding grooves for the other side of the draw frame. The joints he cuts must interlock or dovetail perfectly with the set he just made. There we go. So that is a lovely little dovetail draw box. He finishes by using his router table to cut a rebate along the bottom of each panel for the base to sit in. Oh, like a glove, that is. And holds the drawers together with PVA glue. The jaw box has gone really, really well. It's a little bit touch and go at times because the wood for the size of the jaw box was so thin, but actually a little bit of perseverance and just taking my time over it allow me to just get them just right. In Sussex, Joyner Robin is pulling out all the artistic stops on a set of vintage workman drawers for dealer Shere Khan. Robin has come up with an idea to add value, a plinth. Rather than just something you put on a wall, I think it'd be nice to make it a bit more accessible and have it kind of raised, make it freestanding. Well, my mitre cut should be 45 degrees, so what that should do is give me really nice lines down the corner when that's joined up, almost like a picture frame. There you go. Well, it's a treat. There you go. All that remains to be seen is whether it works. It's exactly the right width. Just gives the actual draw section a little bit more presence and makes it seem like it's, it's separate from the floor and it's floating a little bit. The final task is to marry the new work with the old drawers. I don't think just having it as a lightly stained pine is really going to do it justice. I want to put a, a finish on it that just makes it a bit richer, makes it look really nice. And um, I've been playing around with a few different stains, and I think I've got one that I'm happy with. It's a bold step, and if I start, then I'm all in. I've got to go hell for leather. He has mixed together French polish, button polish, ebony stain and black pigment to give the drawers an ebonised look. It's like a bit of a magic potion, really. Because it's got that shellac polish in there, I've got to give it a couple of coats and build it up layer by layer. I think I'd probably quite like it, but I guess the litmus test would be Shere Khan, because he might not like it at all. A few days later, it's time for Robin to find out what Shere Khan does think of his dramatic makeover. Usually I give strict instructions, but because of the state that this was in, I've kind of given Robin a bit of a free reign. I'm quite excited to see what he's done. You all right, Robin? Shere Khan, how you doing? Not bad. I'm hoping for something a little bit special here. Yeah? It was certainly a big change. All right, let's have a look at this old <laughs> Mother Hubbard. All right. There you go. Wow, Robin. That's some change, man. You know what, Robin? You've done a top job there. I wanted it to be a piece that was, like, still quite bold, but I didn't want to paint it because I wanted still to, it to feel like a wooden piece. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I thought ebonising was probably the way. And yeah. I, I really like that whole black and gold thing. Yeah. The brass handles have kind of added class to it. Absolutely amazing. You've done an amazing job, Robin. When the workman's drawers first arrived in Robin's workshop, crucial parts were missing, woodworm had set in, and the pine frame had been bashed to bits. Robin has given them a new lease of life. He's made replacement drawers to fill the gaps and finished them all with brass handles. He's fashioned a plinth to make it a more usable height, and the ebonised finish has smartened them up and made them fit for another century of use.
plinth was a bit of a gamble for me, but I thought it's all well and good having this living on a wall or sitting on a table, but I thought actually as a standalone piece, freestanding piece, I thought it might open the door up to maybe a few more people that's, wanting it. That, that's it, man. I mean, that's, that's completely changed it for me because you can see this in a hallway, sideboard, something on there to put your keys in. I mean, I remember paying 500 quid. I could easily double, double my money on this. I'm looking at between nine and 1100, so it's gonna pay off. Absolutely amazing. I mean, he's put so much work into that. He's completely changed it. From going to being just something that's for a workshop, um, it's turned to something that someone can have in their living room, they can have in the hallway. Robin, again, like everything you do, man, you do, you do like a world-class work, seriously. All right, my friend, it. take care of yourself. Thanks, you, See you soon. Catch you later. base. Next thing is to actually start marking out the dovetails. Now you can see there's two dovetails there. It looks really simple but it's quite a tricky little bit of marking out to do. To mark the depth of the joints he uses a marking gauge. It's one of my favourite tools actually. It's such a simple tool but it's so good. It's a bit of wood with a pin for it and a sliding block that locks off on a thread. They do two things. They give you a mark to go off, and you actually score the surface. Now, when you start cutting or chiselling, because you've scored the surface, you're less likely to get what's called breakout, where a few splinters might come out of this edge. Because you've scored it, the cut's more likely to be a lot cleaner. 
A dovetail marker is a useful tool for getting angles correct. The usual angle for softwoods like pine is one in six. With that done, he breaks out the chisels. How I normally start this is by just marking my kind of outside edges. Be quite careful here because it's just very thin softwood. So if I go in a bit too much, it's likely to crack the wood. There you go. Next, he marks corresponding grooves for the other side of the draw frame. 